governor's mansion and we were just kind of sitting around chatting and he just wanted to kind of talk to people and get some informal advice about what he could do for economic development in Indiana. And I, I'm the kind of person that if, I, uh, am, if I'm in a group and I don't know anything about what you're talking about, I usually just try and listen. Because I figure I, you know, if I say something, they'll know I'm just stupid. So, so I'll just sit and listen. So we sat down and we had these kind of hors d'oeuvres and we're sitting and I'm saying nothing because they're all talking about General Motors plants and they're talking about environment and they're talking about all these issues, economic issues and stuff like that. And I know nothing about what they're talking about. I have no idea, you know, how this, how I can even add anything to the conversation. And uh, we get to we get to dinner and had a really great dinner. We all sit around the table and they're all talking and continue to talk about how to bring big companies in and how to make a nice environment, a welcoming environment, and all kinds of stuff. Finally, after four hours, we've been sitting there for four hours eating and stuff. Um, uh, Mitch Daniels, who's still the governor in Indiana, uh, closes the meeting with this comment. He said, "Well, I guess what we need to do is uh, build an entrepreneurial state." And I and I raised my hand. I said. Uh, Mitch, I said, excuse me, I haven't said anything all night. And the reason is, is because you just now hit on the very first topic that I know anything about. <laughs> Do you realize that that's the first time the word entrepreneur has been used in the four hours we've been talking about economic development? That was the first time anybody said anything. I was shocked. And, and they were shocked too, because they didn't realize it. And I came away from the meeting and I was like, astounded that we could be in this discussion about the economy and not have said something about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs. And so I started thinking. I said, well, why is that? What's the deal? Because every one of these people, if you'd asked them the question specifically, is entrepreneurship important? They would have said, sure, we've got to build an entrepreneurial economy. They all agreed with Mitch. But the discussion was about something entirely different. And I, and I realized three things. I realized there were three things that were missing here. One thing had forgotten something. They forgot that entrepreneurship is about people. Yeah? It's not the government that starts businesses. It's not venture capitalists who start businesses. It's not college professors who start businesses. It's you all. It's people. They forgot that. Then they didn't know two things. They didn't know that at its heart, entrepreneurship is basically creative problem solving. It's simple. It's not fancy. It's very simple. You find a problem you care about, and then you develop a solution for that problem. Cool. That's it. It's very simple. And the third thing they didn't know was that, and this is amazing, because I didn't know it until about four years ago myself. You can teach people to be creative. There are processes. There are skills. There are tools, and when you have processes, skills, tools, you can teach. I realized that this fall is my 20th year, the beginning of my 20th year of teaching entrepreneurship. For 16 years, I was, I was just flapping in the wind. I wasn't teaching anything for 12, and, if, and I, I, I lived in fear that somebody would ask me, what are your students doing today? Because I didn't have a single success story to tell them that I knew of, of people starting big businesses or doing anything amazing. But when I found out that you could go back to the beginning and you could teach something very simple about creativity, and we incorporated that into our curriculum when I came here in Pepperine, it made an incredible difference. It made an incredible difference. Many of the students who are here have already launched a business or in the process of launching a business. So I'll give you some statistics about that in just a minute. But it has made a powerful impact. Now, what I want to do with you is just very quickly show you what's, this, what's transpired over just the past year. This is, this is kind of like the last year and a half that's happened at Pepperdine as we built on this very simple idea that, that creativity is at the core of entrepreneurship and that you can teach creativity, okay? So here's what we got. We, we have an MBA concentration in entrepreneurship. And what we did, the first thing was we, we sort of revitalized the, the, uh, the curriculum. And we said, okay, the very first thing we need is a class that's all about ideas. So you don't come into an entrepreneurship class and we say, like, you've got a weekend to come up with an idea that you're going to live with for the rest of your life. We say you've got seven weeks. And we're going to come up with dozens of ideas until you find one that sticks, right? Now, what I really do in this class is trying to reduce my students back to fourth grade. 
You know, it's kind of like unlearn everything you've learned and get back to fourth grade because I want you to be like this kid I met in McDonald's. I was in McDonald's in uh, Muncie, Indiana, and a colleague of mine from Ball State was there, and he had his little son. His son was about, like fourth grade. And uh, his son was just so proud. He had this hat on his head, and it was a Smokey the Bear hat. And he had joined the fire brigade as some kind of like a Boy Scouts, only they're all about fires. And he was into fires. And so he found out I was going to California. He said, you've got fires out there, don't you? <laughs> I said, well, I haven't actually moved out there yet. But yeah, I heard that you have fires out there. Yeah, you have really bad fires. So I said, okay, great. He said, well, sometime are you going to be talking to the governor out there? I said, yeah, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm winking with his dad, I'm like, yeah, but he said, I'll say, hey, well, from Schwarzenegger, we're going to be at the party on fires, right? But I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, you know, I'm going to be talking to the governor sometimes. He said, great. When you see the governor, i got this idea for you. He said, here's what you do. You know, you're really close to the ocean there, and you build these pipes that go down to the water, and you bring the water up to the top, and then you spray all those fires, and they'll take care of all the fires for you. I said, wow, that's a really great idea. He said, hang on, I got another one. <laughs> okay. We're going to line up fire trucks all the way down the Pacific Coast Highway. We're going to have 100 fire trucks that are going to be waiting. If there's a fire, they'll all go there and they'll put the thing out. He said, wow, oh, that's another good idea. He said, wait a minute, I got another one. And then his dad went, said, well, we've got to calm this guy. We've got to hose this kid down. We've got to get on something. And, and he said, I'll meet you back here next week and I'll share some more ideas with you. And just have idea, idea, idea. And it was totally unfettered by feasibility or realism or whatever. He was just a factor like this. And, and that's, that's the beginning of entrepreneurship. That's what you have to be at to be a good entrepreneur. You have to be able to just let all that stuff go and dream the good dream. And then bring it into reality with feasibility class. Okay, good idea. Now, how can we make that real? How can we work that out? So we've got a feasibility class. Then we say, okay, now that you've got an idea that you've come up with that's got some innovation to it, and we've kind of worked out the feasibility part, now let's start building a business model. So we put you in a finance class that does your financials and tell you how much you need and, and where to get the money. Put you in an operation in a management class that talks about the operations and how's the whole thing sort of work, what the, what the mechanics of this of the of the business. Marketing class, I'm in a market, especially a product that no one's ever heard of. And it finishes with a capstone course that uh, that pulls it all together in a business plan. Finally, finally get to the business plan. No, we don't do the business plan until the very end. Right? We pull it all together and put it to that. So we put this little curriculum together, and, and in the fully employed program, it takes you a year to get through, in the full-time program, we can do it in two trimesters. Uh, but it lays out like that, and it follows through. And time and time again, I've had entrepreneurs tell me, you know what, that is exactly the process I use to start my business, and so I know we're on track with that. Now, some fun things happened along the way. Um, I was uh, I met up with my old buddy, John Shear. John Shear was a guy that I had met when I was in the, in the Midwest. And, I, and came to find out that he had moved to California, one of my favorite entrepreneurs of all time. Uh, I, he didn't know I moved out. When we found that out, we hooked up, had coffee, began to talk, and realized that he could add something to our program that wasn't there. And that was a connection to some technology. So we hired John as a full-time technologist. He helps our students find technologies to solve their problems, not just, uh, you know, just high-tech technologies, but whatever uh, means there is to solve the problem, to make it come into reality. He's there to assist the students to do it and make connections with great institutions like uh, uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. Cheryl's here someplace. Hi, Cheryl. To make connections with them, with, uh, with institutions that have tremendous technologies that we can use. And so that's what John does as a full-time job. So, uh, so then John came on, and, and uh, not long after that, we had our first entrepreneur's journey last year. We have another one here. Great event. Uh, Doug Howe and the team have put this thing together, done an excellent job of pulling panels and, and helping people with their businesses. We had a business plan competition, but we sort of ratcheted it up a notch, a notch and uh, so we've, we've uh, worked on that. So then we're going along a little bit more. We say, well, you know what? We need some senior fellows. We need some people involved in this program who have some bandwidth who have been down this track before. And so now we've attracted a great group of senior fellows to be involved with us. Uh, many of them are on the panel today, and, and we can, you know, you can meet them and be part. And they and they have input into our students. They come into the classroom and they are, uh, they print stuff panels panels and they and they provide funding and they do lots of great things for us. So we have that uh, 
program in place. And then, not too long after that, John says, you know, what we really need is, is a mechanism for doing what we call proof of concept. So, so you've got the idea, you've come up with a technology, you've built the business plan, and now you've got to build the thing. What is the thing that you've got so that you can be ready for first round funding? So we're working on First Wave Accelerator. I hope to roll that out this spring, uh, a, a, a way to fund and help people to do that. And, uh, oops, back up. What did I do? Okay, uh, and now what we've developed is a, is a whole new uh, degree. Now we have a Master of Sciences getting, roll, getting ready to roll out in the summer. Master of Sciences is kind of cool because it's, it's fewer units than an MBA. It's more focused on entrepreneurship. If you are actually a, 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 an alum with an MBA from, you know, from Pepperdine, you can uh, uh, take out the first 16 units of class time and have 23 units uh, to get a, a master's in entrepreneurship, which you can do part-time in a year. So it's a, it's a really good option to sort of go through the same process, have access to the same resources as the MBA concentration students do in a much shorter time and a much more concentrated format. And so we've got this new program going on. And here's my little dream. Eventually, uh, we're going to uh, wrap all this up into a formal entrepreneurship standard and a name on it. So we're, we're hoping to get a name, named institution going. So anyway, this is, this is what we're doing. Now, let me give you just a little bit of what's happened in terms of results. Um, uh, you know, what are we seeing? What's, what's the, the end result of all this activity? And again, this has all happened in a very short amount of time, in about a year and a half. Um, we have students who are inventing things and patenting their inventions. Every term, I have one, two, three students who are inventing something that can be patented. And, I, and if you know Pepperdine, you know that we don't have uh, graduate school of science or graduate school of engineering, medical, nothing. So, so how do you get to a place where you're actually patenting medical devices or other things? Well, they find a problem, they dream up the solution, and we work with our technologists to sort of figure that out and say, well, there's nothing out there now. Listen, we got to patent this thing and go forward. And so we have people inventing stuff. We have students starting businesses. I, last count, I had 15 that have started this year. And we have probably at least that much in the wings that are ready to be started. Uh, and, and, and that's a really important thing. There are a lot of people that are in the process of starting a business. In fact, uh, I surveyed our students, you know, people who have been through our program this summer, and found out that, uh, now I'll give just to set the stage, the question I asked is, are you alone or with others in the process of starting a business? And that's a question that the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor asks across the, around the world of people randomly by telephone. They call people up and ask that question, they get to get a percentage. To gauge the level of entrepreneurial activity in certain parts of the country. In the United States, the latest poll that, asking that question, 6% of adults responded that they were in the process of starting a business in the United States. 6%, which is still a large number of people, but 6%. In our program, when I asked that question of our people who have been through our program, 55% said that they were in the process of starting a business. 45% of our graduate students, 65% of our existing students, current students, are in the process of starting a business right now. And we have 150 students that are going through a program. That's a lot of businesses. If we can do that year in, year out, term in, term out, class in, class out, we will make an impact. We will make an impact on California and Los Angeles because the Kauffman Foundation did a study that showed that all net in, uh, employment growth comes from startups. It all comes from people starting businesses, and that's what we're doing, we're starting businesses. And when you have that many people moving forward starting businesses, one or two or a bunch of them are going to be big hits. It's just probable. It, it has to happen, right? And so we're making a difference. But now I want to, I want to close with this. Um, and I do want to say this uh, before, I, uh, before I close with this little item, that we have uh, three of our existing students that have tables out in the hallway here. So as you, as you leave, 
And as you uh, uh, go down the hallway, they're out there to, so they can show you what they're doing, what the product is about. Uh, those of you who are current students, uh, the uh, Learned by Ear people are actually hiring right now. So if you're interested in a job, uh, you might think about stopping by their booth especially. But we have uh, three businesses out there. One's called Learned by Ear. Uh, Stephen Yao and uh, Brett Fisher started, uh, started that business, and it's all, all about audio, um, uh, audio flashcards to help people learn better, especially audio, uh, audio learning, so that's a business out there. Uh, we have Alayla Kalolo, uh, who is out there, and she's one of our students who is uh, starting her, um, uh, managing her career, her singing career. So she started a business around her singing and her ability uh, to put her band together and be out and do shows. And, uh, and we have uh, Barney at Desmond and Gary Rudolph, and they have uh, a business that's called Where You At. And it's a GPS where you can, you can kind of punch in where your friends are at, and, and, or uh, punch in your friends and tell you where they're at at any given point in time. So if you have to meet out at a certain place or a certain time, you'll know where they're at and how close they are and when they'll get there and all that kind of stuff. So real interesting businesses. So those three businesses are out there. Uh, you can go by and talk to them and just ask them about the business and what they're doing, and, that, and that's very interesting stuff. So, um, I'll also say that we do have a, a, a table, if you're interested in the Master of Science in Entrepreneurship for any reason, uh, Taylor Beckett, uh, they want to wait to her for them. She's uh, manning the table out there by the registration and uh, has more information about our Master of Science in Entrepreneurship, and so she can work you through that. Uh, but, but the thing that excites me most, and I'll close with this, uh, about the Entrepreneurship Program and what we're is uh, it's not only the, the inventions that we're inventing and the businesses that we're starting, uh, but it's the changed lives. And that's the most exciting part to me, is just to see people change. So I want to read this from a student uh, he wrote to me. Uh, and this is what he said. He said, I just wanted to say that my entrepreneurial claims are stoked, and it is what I want to do with my life. I've got three business pursuits that I'm targeting, one of which came from the feasibility class. It's exciting to me, a dream. I know I can do it, and this is the part I like. Serial entrepreneur, that's what I want them to say about me one day. Loathe the thought of being any sort of company man for life. Half of you are responsible for my family, but loathe the company man thought. Thanks for everything. Serial entrepreneur, why wouldn't that be good? If everybody in this room was a serial entrepreneur, I think that would be great. So I would have just a couple of minutes, if anybody has any questions yeah, about the program, about what we're doing. I don't know when are you going to school. As an entrepreneur, I think you go through a significant amount of pains. The pain is emotional. The pain is questioning yourself. Is, am I doing the right thing? Am I not doing the right thing? Are the people I have working for me good, bad, and different? The pleasure part of it is, I got that off. Yeah. Now you got to understand that. You have to understand that, and at least in my opinion, balance. Mm -hmm. If you can't zero those two things out, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Like a salesman. Salesmen typically work on tremendous highs and tremendous lows. A good salesman balance the highs and lows and do well. Yeah. And it's a tough thing to teach, but I think it's something that you have to get across to anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, very good. I haven't very mastered good. it, but at least I think it. <laughs> <laughs> good. Maybe we can find a way to teach that brain the question. That's a great. Other questions? Any questions? Yes, go ahead. Um, I, 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 know, I got a piece of advice from my grandfather a long, long time ago. He said, never start something you can't afford to fail. Okay. Yeah. What happens if uh, after 662, your bright new idea is not feasible? Oh, it's not feasible. Very good. Uh, in any part, in any point in here, uh, people can change their ideas. The, uh, you know, just like in any educational uh, process, the, the most important part of the class is that they learn how to do that piece, right? So, so we are going to have some people who are going to get to the 662 and, the, and they're going to find out that the idea is not feasible. The good news is we, they have like about 20 or 30 or a whole notebook of ideas that they can draw from to take to now do the feasibility on that one and see if that'll work. If that doesn't work, then they do the next one, they do the next one. Too often, what you have, and I was a small business development center director for a long time, clients would come in and they got one idea. And you say, that's not gonna work for some reason, and they're shattered, they got nowhere to go because that was the one idea they've ever had about a business. And so what we teach them is, how do you keep coming up with more and more and more ideas? And, and if you talk to entrepreneurs or serial entrepreneurs, 
they are serial problem finders. They find problems everywhere that they can solve, and they learn how to do that. So we're teaching the students the process of doing that. If that particular idea doesn't work, perfect. You, you know, go on and find another one and keep going through the process. So that's what we do there. Time for one more question. Got one more out there? Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, lunch is in the cafeteria, right, Doug? Right. So thank you so much and uh, for this morning. Good morning, and come back after lunch for more great sessions this afternoon.